Hey, check out my book in the library. The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations. Right in the library here. Well, you can't check it out, actually. It's on reserve to protect it. Hey, hi. Oh. Any interesting encounters today? Oh. At one o'clock, there was a whole bunch of, you know, Zionist protesters here. Protesters or just people walking around? No, no, no. They had a big thing going, you know. Oh, nice. Because last week there was a hundred pro-Palestinians who came here because somebody else got their book banned in the Jewish Public Library. No, I don't think that's okay, even if you disagree with it. Yeah, so Although, they probably thought that all the pro-Palestinians were going to come back today, so they came here to outnumber them, but there was none of them here. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, just, I have heard, when you first said they were protesting here, I got worried because I have heard people have been protesting outside of Holocaust museums. And I just think that's insensitive. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, if they're not Jewish, and if they say stupid things, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. um, so, I think, one thing I was thinking about. Um, you, you, wait, hold on. Yeah, when you say, like, no to the occupation. Yes, we don't know what's an occupation, but... When you saying that isn't going to change anything, so what you hear on the holding the sign up, what you could change is, I mean, like, I don't know, like, my main thing I've been trying to tell people about is you can be a Zionist like myself, but, but totally uh, disagree with the government yeah. and criticize the government. Because I, I think people, when people think Zionist, they think of someone who unapologetically like, loves the Israeli government and agrees with every decision they make. In my ideal situation, everyone would be living in peace and, and harmony and we'd all... Yeah, you're a Zionist in theory, because you define Zionism in a particular way, which well, is... The, defini the, the definition of Zionism is just thinking we should, the Jews should be able to self-identify as a state. Yes. Yes. But the principle involved there is self-determination. It's a principle yeah. of a right of self-determination. And Jewish people as a people have a right of self-determination. I agree with you there. Yes. The question is how to do it. And how not to, uh, you know, how not to contradict the very same right of another people. Because the Palestinians also have the same right of self-determination. Yeah. Okay, so how to do that? That's why I wrote the whole book, you know, that's in the library here, The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations. Well, you're right, you're probably right about your bun stuff, right? Yeah, the bun, you know, has this idea that every nationality and nation like us should have national cultural autonomy, should be able to govern themselves. Even if they're living in another country, every nation should have its own institutions. And that's partially implemented in Canada, you know, Canada gives, you know, subsidies for community language papers of all sorts, you know, that sort of thing. But, like, why, I agree that, like, the, obviously the Palestinians are also native to that land, but why, why is it that, um, like, the, in, in your opinion, like, the Chinese, they, or all the other countries, like, they have the right to self-identify as a state, but just because we're Jews, we don't, you, you don't think we should identify as a state, but instead, you're, uh, like, little governments across the world. Well, there was a, a territorialist, Jewish territorialist movement that had the slogan, uh, land without a people for a people without a land. And, and they were, you know, intent upon setting up a state. So that wouldn't have been, you know, a problem. You know, if they had a, you know, a piece of land like Upper State New York or something that was, you know, without a people. But where there's another people and you expel them, Whoa, that's a whole other story. That's well, Zionism. You know, you it's also different. You have to look at the context behind, you're, if you're talking about the Nakba. Like, yeah. They, they, all the Arab countries attacked Israel. And, uh -uh. Then, and because of that, I don't I don't think it should have happened, but because of that, a lot of people voluntarily fleed. A lot of people got forcefully kicked out by the IDF. But uh, in, 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 in the end, you have to think about it. Like, they would have kept the Arab Israelis that are still there today. There probably would have been more if all the Arab states, including the Arabs in uh, the pa Mandate of Palestine, didn't attack uh, Israel. Well, they disagreed with the Jews. in 1947, the Arab states did not attack Israel. The partition plan set up Israel to be like 52% of the territory. Yeah. So, um, 
in for, in the, between 47 and 49, the Haganah and the Irgun and, and, the, and uh, the other group, uh, they went on the offensive. And they went beyond the partition plan boundaries. And they took over 70% of the land in Palestine. Okay. From 52% no, in 47... They were totally okay with their 52%. And then uh, no, they seized more territory. Then why did they go after, beyond? They seized more territory after they won the defensive war. No, no, the the Arab armies only came up as far as the Green Line, which was, uh, you know, 67 Israel. They didn't go beyond that. So they didn't attack the part uh, that was allocated by the partition plan as being Israel. They only stopped the Zionists from going further. And then in '67 they took everything. They weren't going to. They would. They they would have abided by like the the partitions plans rules they didn't. and borders. They didn't. Wow. And you have to look at reality. They didn't. And what would have happened if if the Arabs won that war? Would they 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 would have been occupying more territory. No. Then the like, Zionists then, would have uh, had to retreat back to the partition plan frontiers. And then before, like in the night, like why didn't before the 1967 war? Why didn't no one care that like Jordan and Syria and all those other countries were occupying uh, the parts that Israel... Oh yeah, the king of Jordan, he made a secret deal with the Zionists to divide up Palestine between the two of them. It's like the secret deal between Russia and the Nazis to divide up Poland. Same. Similar. Very similar. They divided up each half-half. And they didn't care about the Polish self-determination. Neither the Stalinists nor the Nazis. They're both, you know, like, they're both reactionary. The same thing is happening here. And then 2, 000, 2 million Palestinian refugees went into Gor Jordan, where they live now. Half the population of Jordan are Palestinians. Yes. Incredible. They can't accept any more refugees. Yeah. Egypt what? will refuse to accept any refugees. Because they, they said they don't want to be contributing in ethnic cleansing, right? No, it's because they're afraid of the Palestinians. Oh, oh, well, that, <laughs> Two yeah, million no, well, Palestinians so they, they, they say they don't want to be ethnic. Uh, they don't want to participate in ethnic cleansing. But yes, the reality is they're scared. Yeah, two yeah. million Palestinians in Egypt. They would make a revolution, get rid of the military yeah. right away. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, people are getting mad at Israel for doing the assault on Rafah, which is under I don't agree with it, but it, I, it's understandable. But then when Israel wants to evacuate the citizens, then they say, no, you can't do that, that's ethnic cleansing. So in this situation, what are they supposed to do? It, it just really seems like they can't get out of it unless they totally forfeit the war, which they're not going to do. It's never enough. Like, it's just not one thing... I don't think Israel can get away with this. The whole world is uh, opposed to this. Uh, you know, Israel could be suspended from the United Nations well, and, I, and put I under want, sanctions. What I'm wondering, what I'm wondering, well, they, they already hate them enough. But I'm wondering, why wasn't, there, there was no protests all across the world, uh, like with uh, Assad bombing Syria, displacing so many people, killing so many people. The UN didn't talk about it nearly as much oh. as it, they talked about Israel when they weren't even in a war. It just feels, yes, okay, you might not agree with this, but I think there's anti I know there's anti-Semitism involved. When, when they don't condemn North Korea, like Venezuela, uh, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, combined, all those horrible countries don't have as many uh, like resolutions or whatever you call them combined. Hello. You fucking don't know what you're talking about because uh, nobody of your family was killed, okay? Tomorrow, yeah. this Yes, my family was killed kill? in the Holocaust. Yeah. Tomorrow, I know this fucking the Holocaust Palestinian is. gonna come, rape your daughter, no. kill you, no, like they don't. other kill. They you don't. are fucking betrayer. There's 5,000 Palestinians that live in Montreal. I'm on your face. I'm a Christian, and I, I'm about to spit on your face because you're fucking betrayer. You, well, you're a fascist. And this one Palestinian will catch you and do whatever they do for kidnap people, okay? Yeah, that's family enough. Kills okay, you goodbye. Divorce, you yeah, that's asshole. enough. Yeah, bye-bye. Hey! I'm not going to fight anybody who does that. Christian. That's a Christian. That's the third time the banner has been attacked. Well, to be honest, I, 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 know, I know we disagree on it, but I really think that, uh, no, like, what, about 